Imagine that you are managing an Azure environment and suddenly a junior admin deletes an important Azure resource. Now as a senior admin, do you have the right access to restore the resource or have you thought about is your backup policy sufficient enough to save these critical events? That's exactly where Azure are back and Azure backups comes into the picture. Two critical resources that every Azure admin must master. So in this episode, my friends, we are going to dive in and understand these two important concepts by taking some questions and answers. Plus, we are also going to take some questions from the previous episodes. And these questions are with the revised answers and the updated Azure concepts. And all of these questions are highlighted by our awesome viewers just like you. So let's buckle up and start the video. So let's begin the part 51 with the question number 281. Now, before I read this question, I want your attention to be drawn to this yellow triangle here. What it actually means is that this question is a revision to the previous question marked by this number in the yellow triangle. So you can go ahead and watch the previous episode as well to fully understand the revision we are doing in this revised question. For now, let's read this question given here. It says that you have an Azure subscription that contains a user named user1. Now you need to ensure that the user one can deploy virtual machines and manage virtual network. Very important point, two responsibilities user one should be able to do, deploy virtual machine and manage virtual network. The solution must use the principle of least privilege and this is very important and deciding factor for the answer in this question. Which role based access control better known as RBAC should you assign to the user one? And here you can see that we are given with the four options. Option A, virtual machine contributor. Option B, network contributor. Option C, owner. And option D, contributor. So let's check out the correct answer given here. I will give you the logic as well. So as for me, my friends, the correct answer would be option D, contributor. So let me give you more explanation on the same. So here you can see that we have, first of all, we have virtual machine contributor, which is an incorrect option. And this is because by having virtual machine contributor for the user one, he will be able to create and manage the virtual machines, but he will not be able to manage the virtual network. And that is one of the ask of the question. So that is why virtual machine contributor is not the correct answer. Coming to the network contributor. Well, in this case, he'll be able to create and manage virtual networks, subnets, network security group, but he cannot deploy the virtual machine. But as per the question, he should be able to deploy virtual machine. So this is again a incorrect option. Then we have owner. Well, owner, of course, as a owner, the user one would be able to deploy virtual machines. He'll be also able to manage the virtual networks. But the problem is that the owner access is too permissive and there will be too many privileges beyond what is required violating the principle of least privilege. So that is why my friends contributor is the correct answer and you can take all these screenshots make your notes of all the explanations that I'm giving in this question and also the questions follow through and for the revision in this question I want to give the credits to one of our viewers his name is Rimberic and he has spotted this correction in the question thank you Rimberic and similarly, my friends, in case you also feel that the answers to any of the questions is not correct or you want to discuss it further, let me know in the comment section. I read all the comments and in case I find your answer is correct, I will bring that answer in the subsequent videos and also will give you full credits for that revised question. And additionally, in case you want to deep dive into the concept of Azure rule based access control, this is the documentation that you can read on. But let me very quickly try to summarize this for you. So Azure RBAC, my friends, is an authorization system that helps manage who has the access to the Azure resources and what they can do with those resources, what are the areas that they have access to. And what are the key concepts in the Azure RBAC? Well, first of all, we have role assignments and then we have security principle, also role definition, scope. So all of that concept you can read on on this documentation. But just to tell you very quickly how it works. First of all, we have role assignments. So you really attach a role definition to a security principle at a particular scope to grant the access to the particular user or service principle. And then you can manage the multiple role assignment. So Azure RBAC, my friends, is additive. That means that effective permissions are the sum of all the role assignment to particular user. 
So all of that you can read in this uh, beautiful documentation. The links to all the documentation that I'm referring in this video is always given in the description box. And these videos, my friends, they are not just questions and answer videos. These videos with the official documentation, in-depth explanation and practical scenarios will really boost and sharpen your Azure understanding. So do not miss to watch the next episode and the best way to remind is subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon and also do not miss to select that all option. Let's move on to the next question, question number 282 that says that you have an Azure virtual machine named VM1. Now you use Azure Backup to create a backup of the virtual machine 1 named Backup1. And after creating the backup one, you perform the following changes to the virtual machine one. So what are the changes? First of all, you modify the size of the virtual machine one. Then you copy a file named budget.xls to a folder named data. Thirdly, you reset the password for the built-in administrator account. And lastly, you add a data disk to the virtual machine one. And further on, an administrator uses the replace existing option to restore the VM1 or virtual machine 1 from the backup 1. Now you need to ensure that all these changes to the virtual machine are restored. So which change should you perform again? You have to select two correct options. Let's look at the options given. Option A, modify the size of the virtual machine. Option B, reset the password of the built-in administrator account. Option C, add a data disk. And lastly, option D, copy the budget XLS to the data folder. Now, first of all, my friends, in order to answer this question, let me first try to explain you what exactly is this replace existing restore option to restore the Azure virtual machine data. So when you actually restore an Azure virtual machine using the replace existing option from the backup, the restore operation, it really replaces the entire virtual machine with a one from the backup snapshot. And it also restores any operating system disk and also any backup disk that was part of the backup. However, the changes made to the virtual machine properties such as size, admin password, file system content within the existing disk are retained if they were captured in the restore snapshot and the data disk that are added after the backup and the data disk that were added after the backup was created are not included in the restore and must be re-added manually. So thus, after restoring the virtual machine one from the backup one, you need to manually add the data disk again as it was not part of the initial backup. So now after understanding all this logic, let me tell you the correct answer. And that is option C, add a data disk. And then the second correct option is option D, copy budget.xls to the data folder. And you can understand everything on how to restore Azure virtual machine data in the Azure portal in this documentation. So this documentation, it describes how to restore the Azure virtual machine data from the recovery point stored in the Azure backup recovery service vaults. And here you can see that we are given with all the restore option. We have create a new virtual machine and this option, it actually quickly creates a basic virtual machine from the restore point. And you can specify the virtual machine name, its resource group and the virtual network. Then we also have this restore the disk and this option, it restores the virtual machine disk, which can be used to create a new virtual machine or attach it to the existing virtual machine. And then we have this replace existing and this option, it actually replaces the disk on an existing virtual machine with a restore disk. So everything you can read in more details. I just summed it up very quickly for you. So now let's very quickly jump on to the next question. Very interesting question. Question number 283. It says that you have a Microsoft intro ID tenant named Contoso.com that contains a user shown in the following table. So here is the table. The other details given in the question is that the user three is the owner of the group one. The group two is a member of group one. So these are the nitty gritties, my friends, you have to keep in mind. Further on, the question is saying that the user three can perform an access review of the user one. You configure an access review named review one as shown in the following exhibit. So this is the exhibit and this is the table. Now here you can see that we're given with multiple information. First of all, we are given with the names of the user, user one, two, three, user A and user B. Then we are given with the type of the user. First of all, we have user one as member, user two as guest, then user three as member, user A also member and user B as guest 
type and not only that you can also observe all these users what are they member of so are they member of group one group two or probably they are not member of any group like user three so all that information you can observe here now let's look at the access review so here we are given with the review one the start date of the review is given here frequency is one time then we are given with other information as well so now my friends based on all this information given in this table given in the question and this review one snapshot you are asked three statements here and you have to tell whether this statement is correct or not so let's read the first statement it says user three can perform an access review of user one and this is an incorrect statement that's why we have chosen no as the answer and then we have second statement that says user three can perform an access review of user a this also is an incorrect statement that's why once again no is the correct answer and lastly we are given with this statement three that says user three can perform an access review of user b and this once again my friends is an incorrect statement now friends let me give you a detailed analysis of each statement starting with this one first one here so in this one we have selected no and the reason is that the user one is a member of the group one here you can see that but the user one is not a guest user and since the access review only applies to the guest users user one is not included that's why no is selected for this option now coming to this second statement here in this one my friends we have again selected no the reason is that the user a is a member of group 2 which is nested inside group 1 so all of that information you can gather from this table and please note that the microsoft intro id access reviews they do not expand nested groups so that's why the user a is not included in the access review and what about the last statement once again it is no and the reason is that the user b like the user a is in the group 2 which is a nested group and since the group 2 members are not automatically included in the review of the group 1 that is why the user b is not part of the access review in case my friends you want more details on this question let me know in the comment section i can provide some more details so that you better understand but for now let's move on to another very interesting question question number 284 that says that you have an azure linux virtual machine that is protected by azure backups now one week ago two files were deleted from the virtual machine and you need to restore the deleted file to an on-premises computer as quickly as possible which four actions should you perform in the sequence and of course to answer you have to select the appropriate uh, options given in this action segment and you have to drag it to the answer area so let me very quickly give you the correct actions you need to perform and then i will give you the explanation first of all you have to go to the azure portal and from there you have to click file recovery from the vault then once you have done this you have to select a restore point that contains the deleted file post that you have to download and run the script to mount a drive to the local computer and finally you have to copy the files using file explorer so very quickly let me try to give more information on this question so first of all my friends you have to understand that the backup allows the file level recovery from the virtual machine backup and this really enables you to restore specific files without restoring the entire virtual machine and the entire process involves mounting a recovery point to the original virtual machine and also then copying the necessary files to your desired location so that's why these are the steps that you need to perform for now let's very quickly move to the next question that is question number 285 and this question is very related to the previous question if you remember in the previous question we talked about the azure linux virtual machine but in this question this is the version for the azure windows virtual machine and the reason for taking a very similar question is that as an azure administrator you will never know whether you are working with linux or windows virtual machine and of course the exam az104 can have any version of the question so the question more or less is exactly the same except for this change here azure windows virtual machine now the actions given here are according to the windows virtual machine let's see the correct sequence or the correct four actions you need to perform first of all in the azure portal you have to navigate to the recovery services vault that contains the backup post that you have to initiate a file recovery operation and select the appropriate recovery point once you are done with this you have to download and execute azure backup file recovery executable on the windows virtual machine 
And after that, as a last step, you have to copy the recovered file from the Windows virtual machine to your on-premises machine using the method such as RDP, which is Remote Desktop Protocol, SMB or AZ copy. Very important utility from Microsoft Azure. And friends, to really help you out, let me tell you what are the key differences between Linux virtual machine and Windows virtual machine. So first of all, Linux virtual machine, Azure provides a script to mount the recovery point. But for the Windows virtual machine, Azure provides an executable tool that you can also see in these options here to mount the backup as a virtual drive. And also there is a difference in the file transfer method. For Windows, we have RDP, SMB and AZ copy. And for the Linux, we have SCP, RS Sync, and AZ Copy. And all these options ensures fast file level recovery without restoring the entire virtual machine. So I hope you understood the concept. I hope you understood both the options, Linux and Windows. Any confusion, please let me know. So in case you're ready to take on the exam series on both Microsoft Azure and Amazon AWS, then you can surely benefit from our multiple exam series on both of these top cloud providers. And not just that, we also keep on making videos on free exam vouchers, insights into the world of generative AI, artificial intelligence, and also machine learning. And yes, do not forget to subscribe to the channel, press that bell icon, and also do not miss to select that all option so that you are receiving all the timely notifications. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.